Hi. This was going to be a mail call video where I open up packages that people send me. However, the video file got corrupted and I can't reproduce opening up the package. So this is a modified mail call where you don't get to see me open up a package and throw all the paper on the floor. This is just talking about what came in the package because I can't resurrect the corrupted files. Recently, I was contacted by a guy named Roger and Roger lives in Texas and he bought a house in Texas and it had a music and sound MC602 system in it. They decided that they were going to renovate the house before they moved in and they decided that they didn't want to keep the intercom system. So he's a viewer of this video of this YouTube channel and he contacted me and said if I wanted it at all he would send it to me and I said sure why not because it's always good to have extra stuff. Now, some of you who watch this channel regularly may know that we are dipping our toes into the world of music and sound intercoms a little bit. I fixed a few. We work on the last models they made, which are the DMC1 and 34, because they are the same as the Newtone NM series, so easy crossover there. And then we're kind of working backwards, it seems, where we've worked on one or two of the MC models. The last one was an MC602 like this, and it had a radio tuner problem, which I repaired, and that worked out really well. And recently we came into possession of a lot of technical information and schematics and things about music and sound intercoms. That helps the battle somewhat also. So I've already opened all this stuff, so let's just review briefly what he sent me. So we have an MC602 Mac master station in white. Uh, it is discolored to some degree. You probably can see the door here is still fairly white, but the faceplate panel here has yellowed to some degree. It doesn't really matter to me because we didn't. I didn't take this to fix it up and sell it. I took it as an educational tool or a parts unit. The educational tool thing is if you're going to figure out and learn how to work on and repair things, you have to have examples to work on. And that's exactly what we've done with the DMC series and the NM series, which is I have lots and lots and lots of broken ones and blown up ones and things like that. And when you fix them, that's how you learn what goes wrong with them and you figure out the best ways to fix them if they're repairable. So that's really the future for this unit. I don't know whether it works or not because they never really tried it. So we've got the master station. There is a wall housing. It's on the floor over there. It's just a metal box. We have the low voltage transformer that powers it. Interestingly enough, this is the same transformer. This particular one is a TE5B. The ones used in the DMC and NM series is a TE5B. D like dog. This one's code dated 1997, but they're essentially the same transformer. The difference in the last letter probably has to do with some minor revision in how it was manufactured or for inventory control or something like that. We have sort of a classic music and sound weathered brass door station. Uh, this is a style that they used starting in the early 80s. The models in the early 80s had a big square push button it down here. That was a bad design because there was a lot of gap around the button and the switch on the back would get wet and corroded and that was all bad. So this has a more conventional doorbell push button and it's got the classic music and sound 45 ohm three inch speaker cone on the back. It also includes a C3 chime module. Chime module. C3 is a either a single note or three notes, so it's front door, rear door kind of thing. This chime module is interesting in that it uses all discrete components. There's no microprocessor or microcontroller on it. It's all individual parts that do their individual jobs to make the door chime sounds. So a board like this would typically be infinitely repairable as long as the individual parts are available, which I would assume they are. This is also dated 1998, so while that's you know, it's getting up there age-wise. It's more than 20 years old. It's not that hard to find parts like that. Then he included, there are five remote stations. Three of them are very nice. And everything was packaged really well. Everything's in their own individual plastic bags. They were all wrapped up in a lot of wrapping paper like this, which did get thrown on the floor. So everything was well protected. Three of these are almost like brand new. They're still very white and very usable. Although, like I said, I didn't take all this to sell it or do something like this. It's mostly for parts and for education. So three of them are very nice. One of them is quite yellowed. So it was probably in a room with a lot of sunlight. 
but this one would be ideal for a test unit. You can see here, I took the volume control knob off. You can see how white it is behind the knob and yellowed around it. So this one makes an ideal test setup where you permanently attach wires to it and then you can connect it up to master stations when you work on it to check the functions and make sure everything works correctly. The controls on this are very music and sound like. You have room, talk, and listen. And then door talk is both buttons together. You release them to hear have door listen. And then you have the, these are what they call RS stations, which are the, the actual model for this is an N65 RS. So N I think meant new because it's a new style. 65 is the series. RS is remote scan. So you can have music, you can turn the music on from a remote and raise the volume. You can lower the volume, turn the music off, and if you push both buttons together, it has a scan feature and then of course the volume control. So this one is ideal for a test setup because it's already weathered and worn and I don't care what it looks like, I don't care how it functions. So that's a good use for something like that. There's also this one. which all the labeling is missing. The knob, the button caps are all rough, like somebody sanded them or ground them down. I don't know what they did. And the openings, I don't know if you can see very well, around the buttons are all irregular and kind of wonky. And I think actually this has been painted. It's got some blue paint on this side on the edge where it sat against the wall. And it is an inside station it's from 1998 also. And I have a feeling that someone painted this blue to match the wall color. And then maybe when they put the house up for sale, they, oh, that's not gonna fly. So then they did something, I don't know how this happened, but they painted it white to make it match. So this would also be a good test setup because again, don't care what it looks like, only care how it works. So we have those. And then oddly enough, or maybe not, we have one of these. So this is actually a music and sound station. This is a model DMC4RW. It's a patio or outdoor station because the control board here is inside this plastic box with a gasket to keep the water out of it. And this included an adapter kit. And I, what I would surmise is that the system originally had an outdoor patio station like this one of the large ones, and it failed because it's outside and that's what happens. So this is from a DMC3-4 system. And while you think that may be a problem, it's not because this is interchangeable with this. And if you have, a, if you have these in your house and you were to install a DMC3-4 in place of the MC602 because it died or something, they're completely compatible. The controls are the same. The button layout is a little different, but how they operate is the same. And Music and Sound actually says they're interchangeable one way or the other. So it's a good solution. You have the same controls here. You have talk, listen, door talk, both buttons, on, off, music volume, and scan. The problem with this has always been, in my opinion, so if you take one of these and you want to do door talk, you have to push both buttons together at the same time. But since the button caps are long and rectangular and right next to each other, you just put your finger in the middle and press and that's easy. The problem with these are, these buttons are round, they're like dome shaped and they're spread pretty far apart. They're probably three eighths of an inch apart and you can't, and I have big fingers and I can't really push both of them at the same time with one finger, which means you need two fingers, one on each button and you have to press them like this. And that's a total pain in the neck. People have a really, really hard time with that because it's hard to get them, it's hard to push them both at the same time. It always seems like it's like one and then the other, and that doesn't make the system work correctly. So not a good design in that respect. So the way this worked was when you bought this, you would buy the adapter kit. The metal plate attaches to the wall box that's in the, on the exterior of the house. And then you put the trim plate over it like this, like this, and then the speaker sits in the middle of the trim plate and that gives you a new outdoor patio station. In my opinion, although these look very jazzy and people like them, oh, they're so small and cute. It's the size of a double light switch plate, so they're not very big. They have, again, I've talked about this in other videos, these little tiny wimpy speakers on them, whereas these stations 
have a more traditional five inch round speaker cone. So these have better sound than these do. I'm not a big fan of these, but that's what's available. And if you need one, you need one. There you go. So that's everything that Roger sent me. We are moving forward a little bit on working on some m and stuff. And uh, this helps bolster up that plan because you need to have units to experiment and work and learn on. That's what the fate of this one probably will be. And then perhaps one day it'll become a parts unit or something like that. Don't know, haven't worked on enough of them yet to know. Uh, this is sort of an unusual formatted mail call video. Uh, if you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell. And when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.